What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. So we are actually at the Rose Bowl flea market and it only happens once every month. So the second Sunday of every month. So I thought it would be fun to do another thrift flip. I'm excited to see what we can find. So let's go inside. It was so crazy hot at the Rose Bowl on Sunday. I think it reached like 110 degrees, but I was bound and determined to find things that we could flip into really cute home decor pieces for my house. So I was like going down every aisle. I did find a few pieces that I could flip. So the first thing that I came across was the African mud cloth. I've always seen people turn these mud cloths into tons of different things, rugs or refinishing benches or pillows. So I got an all white version and I also got a black with solid white stripes. Regularly these are $30 a piece but it was so hot that I feel like every vendor there was pretty much huge discounts on their stuff so I actually got two of these for $40 so each one was $20 not too bad and when you think about how many pillows you can actually make out of this size I could probably make about five pillows out of these fabrics so five pillows for forty dollars not too bad we were getting ready to leave and then the very last vendor at the very tippy tippy corner of the Rose Bowl was this lady that had all of these not vintage trunks but just old trunks. They were a little rusted. They were a little beat up. She wanted $20 for them. And I was like, wow, it's already really cheap. And I was like, would you take 15? And she was like, yes, ma'am. I was like, oh my God. Okay. So I got a trunk and fabric and we spent just on this project that we're going to be flipping today, $35. So first we're going to get started on the trunk because we're going to need some time in between for it to dry. So let me show you what kind of shape it's in. Oh my god. So here is our trunk and it's like a cobalt blue color. You can tell that it's pretty rusted on the metal. I mean, overall, it's not horrible. So my inspiration for this trunk is I'm thinking I want to do all of the metal, all glossy black. And then for the inside where the blue is, I'm gonna do like a textured white spray paint. So the supplies that I'm using for this DIY are gonna be some steel wool pieces to really get all of the rough rust off of the metal. I also picked up some blue painter's tape in order to kind of section off what part of the trunk I'm doing first. Some high gloss black enamel spray paint to paint all of the metal on this trunk. And then for our textured white, I'm using a Krylon stone coarse texture spray paint, which is gonna give it that great kind of textured effect, but also it's gonna have like specks of black in it. So it's gonna be super high contrast, which I freaking love. First things that we need to do is wipe it down, get it clean, get all of the rust off of the metal, and then start taping off and painting. Okay, now our trunk is clean and de-rustified. That's not a word, but you know what I mean. So now we're gonna get started on taping off all of the parts that we're not gonna work on first, which is all of the blue parts, so that we can take this outside and spray paint all of the metal black. Okay. You guys, so I literally only taped one foot of this trunk and then I realized that I'm going to be painting all the blue with the white so technically do I even care if I get black on the blue no so we can get started on painting the metal outside Jinx. Okay, we've got all of the metal painted black in this glossy black spray paint. It looks really good. So we need to let this dry really well because what we're gonna do next is actually tape off all of the metal that we just painted in order to paint the base and the body of the trunk in that pebble stone white. So we'll wait.
Okay, an hour and a half later, literally, everything is taped off and we are ready to start painting. So after I started painting with this kind of stone texture, I realized that it just was not gonna cut it by actually getting the trunk as white as I wanted it. So I actually used a flat white primer over the first layer of texture to kind of give it that white textured look and then just spritzed it right on top with the texture again and it gave it that speckled look. And our final step is just to remove all of the painter's tape and we are all done. get started on our mud cloth pillow and the supplies I'm going to be using for this project is a pillow insert, our mud cloth, a piece of canvas that I have that I'm going to do the backing in, and charcoal yarn. So the first thing that we need to do is cut our fabric to size of our pillow. So I want my finished pillow to be 21 inches by 14 inches. So we need to add a half an inch all the way around my measurement in order to allow for seam allowance to actually sew my back and my front together. So that means I need to cut my rectangle 22 inches by 15 inches. So now that I have both my front piece out of what we found at the flea market cut and my back piece because I did want to make as many pillows as I can out of the mud cloth fabric that we got from the flea market so I opted to just put it on the front and I had this leftover canvas from so many different projects I'm using this as the backing of the pillow so before we take out our sewing machine and actually sew this pillow I'm gonna add a little bit of a special detail to this pillow. So using the front of our pillow and this charcoal black yarn and a yarn needle, and this actually has a bigger hole so that you can actually put your yarn into the needle and it's a lot thicker needle, and a ruler and a charcoal pencil, and we're gonna create this really modern design on the front of this pillowcase. I'm gonna take a ruler and my charcoal pencil and draw light lines just to kind of give me a guide for my yarn right directly onto our pillowcase. About five inches from each side and putting each line about half an inch apart. So now you can see all of my little light charcoal lines straight across the pillow. So now that we have our guides, we're gonna take our needle and our yarn thread our needle and then stitch over each of the lines that we've just drawn and leaving about a two inch tail on each side of our lines. strand so I'm gonna add in another strand to the end of each line so that there's more yarn coming off so that it just looks more full now that we have all of the yarn on the pillowcase I'm gonna take my dog's hairbrush literally and make fringe out of these end pieces and just kind of fray them out. So just hold down your knots so that you don't pull any of the strands out and just starting at the ends until you get the fringed look you want. So now I'm just gonna flip in our tassels. I don't catch them in the sewing machine. Then I'm gonna pin our back piece right on top. And then I'm just going to sew it all the way around. Then turning it inside out, we're gonna put in our pillow insert, and then I'm just gonna sew up the bottom, and we're all finished. So I hope you guys enjoyed 
enjoyed this video and these flea market flips and if you did definitely give it a thumbs up below and comment which one was your favorite and what you liked about them I would love to hear from you guys and I post new videos every week you're not gonna want to miss my next video because I am completely redoing my bedroom I'm super excited it's been one of the largest DIY projects that I've actually done because a lot of the stuff is DIY um, so it's really exciting so you're not gonna want to miss that so definitely hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed to my channel already so that you can be the first to know when that one comes out and I will see you guys next week bye guys